course, that was the day that they were going to get rid of him. So as everybody walked out, there were two guys, also people who were from concentration camp, asking you, what's the matter with you? So everybody was telling him what, what's wrong with them. When they asked me what, what's wrong with me, I told them that I get up in the night and I'm dizzy and I have to hold up to a, to a wall or to something until I steady myself. And otherwise I, I feel like falling down. So I heard one telling the other guy that he thinks that I have typhus. So one guy said, you know what, you go back. You go back inside on the bunk, lie down. I did. In the afternoon, I fell asleep. It was in the morning, I don't know, 8, 9 o'clock or so. In that afternoon, I got up. The whole place is empty. There's nobody there. And I asked the guys who are in charge, the Schubendienst there. I says, where is everybody? So he looks at me. He says, you don't know? I says, no, I don't know. He says, they, they took them all, they took them all to, to be gassed. So it like shook me up, and then I asked the guy whether he could go. Yeah, in the evening, my two brothers don't show up. They don't show up because later on they told me one of them had a Jewish calendar somehow smuggled in. He already put down the date of my death because they heard the whole place is emptied out, so I'm, I'm gone too. So they put down the date when I died, I mean, in case they ever come out, so they have at least a date. And I went over to the guy there and I tell him, listen, I'll give you my bread, my ration. Go tell my brothers and ask them why they're not coming. He didn't realize it, that they already know that I'm not here anymore. So he took my bread and he never went to notify them. Well, these blocks were not any further away than here houses are from each other. So next day I begged him and I cajoled him again and again and again. So in the evening he finally took away against my ration. Or, or the additive that was with the ration, maybe a piece of horse uh, salami or whatever they gave you. And he went and he notified them. And I remember like today when my two brothers came to the window, it like they look at somebody who just got up from the dead. And they started crying and begging him and see, get out of here, get out of here. It's, I says, I feel a little better now. I'm going to tell them and I'm going to try to get out. And sure enough, the next day, I really, you know, picked up a little strength. And I was feeling a little bit better. There was like a, like a miracle that this guy takes my pulse and he says, I think he has the typhus and he sends me back to the, to, the, to the, like an angel showed up there. I mean, if I think back today, it like, it's like a guardian angel showing up and says, you go back inside. If I would have stayed outside, I would have really been gone. And the next day I told the guy that I feel much better and they let me go out there again. And then I joined my brothers again in the detail at which time uh, they came to camp uh, with a, some SS uh, guy, came to camp with a civilian guy. I still remember his name was Mr. Mueller. He was an elderly gentleman, and they introduced him that he is a bricklayer master, master bricklayer. And he's looking for some young people whom he wants to train and give them schooling in bricklaying. So they tell us that whoever will volunteer will have a chance to be inside a building the whole day. And they will teach us how to become masters in bricklaying. So I said, it's better than going out to, to work. So I volunteered, and my brother, my middle brother, also volunteered. And they took us away from Birkenau to Auschwitz, to the main camp now. And there they erected in one of the blocks on the third floor a place, as today as you would picture a basement in somebody's house, where they bought a lot of bricks, dry bricks, no mortar. And this civilian came in every day to give us lectures on how you're supposed to lay bricks. Without any cement, just dry, show how to make corners, how to make walls, and how to keep them straight, and how to pull a string across, and how to use a, a Wasserwaage a level, which is mean. And, but we picked up a little strength. It was, it was like a relief from what we were going through up until now. I mean, not a comparison. First of all, in the place of work, 
you didn't get beat anymore. Because this German civilian, he didn't, he might have yelled at us, but he did not beat anybody. And we were no, under no uh, SS guard supervision inside the block. So he was like uh, going from, from hell to paradise all of a sudden. You had, you get your, you had your, uh, you got your ration of uh, drinking, of, of your coffee or your tea, you got your bread. And, and we began uh, picking up a little bit of strength and putting on a little weight, if I can say so. I mean, if you can picture today, I'll, that, that, that uh, you know, when, when you're a skeleton, to put on a little weight under these conditions is very easy. It doesn't take a lot. But it was a big, a big relief. And I feel today that if it wouldn't have been for this chance that my brother and I got in this place, that uh, things probably would have ended up uh, with me never coming out of there. And, and little by little, we gained more and more strength. And it came to a point where they took us out there from there now from the Auschwitz camp back to Birkenau and put us now on the real buildings to, to start perform, to do a job. Now, so the beatings now came, started being again, because now we had already the old supervisors and so forth. But by now we already were strong enough again to be able to start anew, to take all this, this, this uh, subhuman treatment but it was much better than the period that I mentioned to you before uh, with the, with the uh, Zonderkommando and so forth. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's in comparison today, if you take somebody and take them out from a jungle and you put them under a controlled environment where he still has not good, but it's much better than the previous experiences that you had. And uh, we kept on working on these buildings I would say that in general we probably had it a little bit better than the than the uh, than the rest of the guys who had to go out in the fields and who were deprived of all kinds of food and so forth because it helped us a lot that that uh, I remember how many months we were there under this dry what they call uh, teaching in the building that gave us a lot of uh, protection from from weather and from uh, rain and for so forth and you had a uh, quasi a decent kind of a food, if you can say so, in a concentration camp.